I open my own little obeisances in the dust of the lowly seat of my most virtuous hope that she really lives. Literally, let the lips are all mission and fire. I stow it in the second scene of two months. So the bus can go down to the sun until the fire. And the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lowly seat of my most virtuous hope that she really lives. All mission and fire. I stow it in the second scene of two months. So the Bhakti did not to Narayan Gosama Maharaj. To all of our distinguished discussion and all the essential devotees. So today is the most auspicious day for millions of fortunate persons around the world, including myself. This is the most important day of the year. The appearance day of Nijalila Pradishta Om Vishnu Pada. So we will set the scene she must to the Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. We've been having very beautiful festivals over these last two weeks, beginning from Jivan Yatra and then to the Rupa Goswami's disappearance day, to the very day to explain young Kali Rupa Sadhira and God. What would have happened that she Rupa Goswami didn't come? The world wouldn't know about the different kinds of bhakti, the false bhakti, the mixed bhakti, the real bhakti, the rasas. He introduced them, he explained them, and he gave them through his teachings and his public discussions. Then, to the Lord, they explained what would have happened if Chaitanya Mahaprabhu hadn't come. We wouldn't have had that most rare jewel of. And not all the little songs, so Bhakti Sriyam. And what would have happened? As Guru Dev explained yesterday morning, if Krishna hadn't come, there would be no Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there would be no Rupa Goswami, there would be no Balaram, there would be no Sukadeva Goswami, Radha and Krishna ordered to speak Srimad Bhagavatam, there would be no existence. And similarly, if our Srila Prabhupada hadn't come, where would we be? We were all hippies and drunkards and atheists, and he brought to us the uh, sublime knowledge of all the Vedic literature. Not only did he turn those hippies into happy, but he turned those hippies into existence and him producing his 30 volumes of Srimad Bhagavatam. His 17th volume of Chaitanya Charitamrita, his Bhagavad Gita, Gita Upanishad, Nectar of Instruction, which is his translation of Srila Rupa Goswami to Upadeshamrita, and so many other very beautiful transcendental literature. Not only did he make those hippies happy, but he took those hippies and taught them, even in their busy days, how to our Lord Jagannath. He even took a chief, my God Sister Malati, who had stolen a little Jagannath deity from a hippie store in Hay Ashbury in San Francisco. And when she showed Prabhupada this small deity, he said, Are there any more? And she said, Yes, there's a whole barrel for it. And he said, No, I need a different one. He said, Yes, there are two different ones. He said, Get them. So she got them in her own way, and her husband's car was leaving, and he engaged another lady in building the rock park, and they had a very beautiful rock yard festival, where many thousands of people attended. He introduced to us the words of Shadam, taught us how to make the Shadam, and in that first rock yard festival, they distributed the Shadam to 10,000 people. So she was qualified to create a festival all over the world in all the major and minor cities. Srila Gurude has often explained Srila Prabhupada's mantra, Nir Shesha Sundarvani Pasitya Desha Parani, Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pacharani. That he has spoken about many times. And sometimes he explains the second part of that mantra. Near the Shesha Srinivadi, Pasya Kya Deshi Although he didn't 
have a fear of the word Mayavadi. We didn't know what a Mayavadi or a Sunyavadi was, or a near Visheshvadi. At the same time, we all thought we were God, and we all thought that God was zero. So Srila Prabhupada, by his teaching, by his book, he not only introduced the terms, but then he defeated them and turned us into personhood. Even before his book came out, when he was giving lectures at his first temple at 26 2nd Avenue in New York City, when most of the devotees who still had their long beards and hippie clothing and hippie habits, as they were hearing the Prabhupada's morning Chaitanya Chari Kamriti class, they had big gray blankets over their heads like tents, and they were under the tent. And still Srila Prabhupada was giving a very beautiful teaching of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Srila Sanatana Goswami, where he explained the opulence of Krishna and the sweetness of Krishna. How Krishna takes birth in one universe, and the next second he takes birth in the second universe, which is the second second of the first universe, and the third second he takes birth in the third universe, which is the third second in the first universe, and the second second in the second universe. And this is why, for 125 years, Krishna is taking birth in so many universes. We learn from Srila Gurudev that our Srila Prabhupada is actually traveling with Krishna and all of his other associates through the various universes, and he's also traveling with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through the various universes. So even before Srila Prabhupada's book began to come out, when he was speaking to us hippies at 26-second Avenue, he would give very beautiful examples to defeat the Mayavadi philosophy. For example, he would say, the Mayavadis give an example that when water is filling up in a jug, it makes a sound, and then when the water is filled up, then it becomes silent. So the Mayavadis say there's so many things to talk about until you become fully self-realized, and then you become silent. So Prabhupada's response was, if you want to give an analogy, you have to give many similar points. Am I a water jug? The living entity is an animate person. The rock is also silent. So what is the benefit? It doesn't mean that it's self-realized. He said, if you ask the Maya body, why are you suffering? You say that you're God, but I see that you're suffering like a hawk and a dog. And they reply, oh, that is my Eva. So Prabhupada would say, you may be, you may be that God that has that kind of Eva, but we worship that God that's all porna madaha porna midam. So the Prabhupada printed, published, translated, purported Sri Isopanishad and distributed millions, each printing 150,000, 300,000, millions distributed in 50 languages all over the world, where Prabhupada is completely defeating the Mayavadi philosophy as a mouthpiece of Srila Vyaste. Om Purna Madha Purna Midam Purna Purna Mujachite Purna Shikurna Madhaya Purna Viva Vishishite The Mayavadi say that that actual truth is now non-existent because he's become everything. We are also God, so we forgot that. And when we become self-realized, we become that God again. But now that God is not existing as God, but he's just everything. So, Prabhupada as a mouthpiece of Sri Obiaste defeats that. The Supreme Personality of God is perfectly complete. Because he's completely perfect, so many units emanate from him, like this cosmic manifestation, which are completely equipped as a complete whole. Although so many complete units emanate from him, he's so complete that he remains a complete balance. And Prabhupada told us, you may take a piece of paper, <laughs> rip it up and distribute it everywhere. The whole paper is gone. But the Supreme Absolute Truth is so complete that it remains a complete balance. One plus one equals one, one minus one equals one. Then a few verses later, 
That absolute truth, although located in one place in his own planet, he can overcome all other all others running. He surpasses all in excellence, and he controls those who supply the peace and the rain. Then in Prabhupada's beautiful Chaitanya Charitamrita, he also manifested this. Being near the Shesh Shunyavadi, plus Chaitanya Deshantarne. He gave us the beautiful Chaitanya Charitamrita, with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's liberation of Sri Sarva Loma Bhattacharya. And there, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is telling Sarva Loma Bhattacharya. He said that the absolute truth is, imper is impersonal, even though all the Vedic mantras Confirm that the absolute truth is a person, all the Maya bodies like you don't take the direct meaning. They take an indirect meaning and thus concoct that it's impersonal. Then Jay Sarvabhat quotes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saying so many uh, Shastra slogans like Vishnu Bhakti, Vishnu Shakti Parabrota explaining that the Supreme Lord has three powers, unlimited powers, but prominent just three. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, you're saying that that Supreme Lord, with all those unlimited powers, has no powers? You're saying that Bhagavan, who has six arguments, is in person on void, with no arguments and no powers? And thus, through the mouth of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, through his own mouth, and through the mouth of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Prabhupada was the mouthpiece of Krishna Das Goswami for millions of Westerners and Easterners and even Indians who were not fortunate to come in contact with the mission of Srila Gurudev and his Guru Maharaj. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Prabhupada also, near the Shri Thus, Chaitya Vishitarne, in the Pilate's teaching, Prabhupada translated by his causeless mercy, using who? Using Hindi, to be made happy. Translating the Pilate's teaching to his mother, explaining Nirvana. Everybody in the Western world thought of Nirvana as the Sunyavad, the zero list of the Buddhists. But Srila Prabhupada translates the people day that Nirvana means when one, the mind becomes free from all material contamination and it becomes merged in the oneness of the Lord just like a flame. So Prabhupada explains in the purport, introducing all of us hippies, atheists, drug addicts, drunkards, to the Acharya's commentary to the Bhagavad Gita of uh, Sri Sri Narswami of the Vaishnava Tosani by Jiva Goswami of Sarasa Darjani by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and quoting them and giving us the seed of our relationship with them he explains that when a flame goes out it's not lost it's conserved conservation of energy so when the mind becomes free from all material contamination it becomes served but serve in the service of the Lord and becomes one. How? One with the Lord's desire. No more independence, but fully surrender to the Lord's desire. So I'll sum up now and say that Shiva Gurudev explained that although Shiva Prabhupada established so many temples, gurus, so much prasadam, so many books, his real identity is not that he is the founder Acharya of this time. His real identity is that he is in the line of Srila Rupa Goswami and Srila Rupa Goswami to give us Gauravani Vicharya. I asked, one last point. In 1993, I asked Srila Gurudev that because of my offenses to our Srila Prabhupada, I feel that there's a great wall between us and I can't approach him. And I have a conception of him that he's so high and so far away, I'm completely lost from his touch. 
So how can I stand in a new and more intimate way? Third day, like I was committed so many offenses to be dead. That was in 1993. Now I've committed many offenses. So I feel more close to you. How can I see Prabhupada in that intimate way? So he said, here's the definition of Prabhupada. Prabhu means the Supreme Lord. So the Supreme Lord is divided into two. Krishna and Radha. And Radha is the greater part, the sweeter part. So Prabhupada means one who's at the lotus feet of Prabhu, leaning towards Srimati Radhika. And what is Jaya Prabhupada? Not all glories to you out there, the great soul who has nothing to do with me, all victory to you. But Shiva Gurudev kindly explained the meaning of Jai. Jai means victory, and when there's victory, there's defeat. Who should be defeated? My mind, my senses, my material intelligence, my lust, anger, and grief. So when I pray, Jai Prabhupada, Jai Gurudev, Shiva Bhakti Pradhan Keshav Goswami Maharaj is Jai. That means, please conquer. I beg you to please conquer over my mind, my senses, my lust, grief, and anger, and make everything, make them all yours. Just like when one country conquers over another, it makes it fully theirs. So I pray that I see you many, many more. And second of all, I'd like to offer my heart to the to the to the my to the 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 to my to the to the to the his glories are unlimited. His son conditions so much myself. I can't even touch the glories of Sri Lakota's time. But I'd like to try because he will purify my heart and actually there's nothing sweeter for my tongue than to sing the glories of Sri Lakota's Today, and today is the day that Krishna gives gifts. He gives many, many gifts today. So in this form, I think that's a joy for me. He couldn't think of anything more precious to give than Sri Guru. As the day says, Krishna Kripa Ki Ananda Bhakti. Nina Jana Karola Nina Padita Tama Krishna Sri Padhi Ananda Murti Sri Guru Dev So Jiva Prabhupada is this Sri Guru Dev Krishna Sri Padhi condensed blissful personification of Krishna's Kripa And how is that? Which Kripa is this? Your name also is going to be a sudden bhakti Bhav Bhakti and Prem Bhakti. Which Prem Bhakti does Shima Prabhupada hear? He gives Dhrat Bhakti. And which kind of Dhrat Bhakti can Prabhupada hear? He can give the highest Bhakti, the highest Prem Bhakti, Madhurya Ras, Radha Dasa. He kept it very hidden. And he stated, he kept it very hidden, but he has the power to do it. One time Shiva Prabhupada in Russia, he said, he was asked, why did Prabhupada not give Prabhupada Bhakti? And Rude said, it's because no one wanted it at that time. But he has the power to give. So Shiva Prabhupada, why can he give? Because who is Shiva Prabhupada? Shiva Prabhupada boldly declares that he's Rupa Nanda, that the whole, that he's coming to line of Rupa Goswami. 
Îl pui și îl rupă ca soare. Îl rupă ca soare, îl rupă ca soare, îl rupă ca soare. Să știi vă trauma în altă. Îți spune că nu te așteptă pe rupă ca soare, îți dau să o nu ești în legătură la privatitate. So he naturally self-manifested in his heart to have this Madhurya Ra that the same as Sri Mitra has. And he can give this to anyone who wants to. So there was no more precious gift than this that Sri Krishna could send on this day. So he sent Sri Prabhupada. And Sri Prabhupada, what did he do? Nityananda, as we know, he broke open the dam of praying that had been given. That had been that had been dammed up, and it was time that was dammed. It was time that was dammed up the train. It meant that the broke through because this was the time the praying of love of God that Mahaprabhu had brought, and he spread it all over. He went door to door, he went singing, dancing, he was distributing Krishna praying door to door. But there was still another barrier, another dam. What was that? That was the boundary of India. It was still contained within the boundaries of India. So Krishna sent Srila Prabhupada, he took the instructions of his guru, the guru bhakti with the beginning, middle, and end of bhakti. He took the, he took the um, order of his guru on his head and he set out by himself to break the dam and take the Krishna praying all over the world. And he made a platform And on this platform, he sang, he danced, he gave Mahaprasada, he spread this Krishna praying all over the world. He took it to every town and village. He picked this up out of the gutters of America, the gutters of Africa, even some of the gutters of India. You know, and he, and he said, okay, there's no material barrier in Bhakti. You just chant Hare Krishna, we follow the instructions of Rupa Goswami, and you too can go back home, back to Godhead. And he said, what is our home? Our home is Vrindavan. My home is Vrindavan, your home is Vrindavan. You should make your heart Vrindavan. And, and he also said, everyone is welcome to come to Vrindavan. I encourage everyone to come. And anyone who can stay here permanently and become Vrindavan, That is very inspiring. They should do. So in Bhagavad Gita, the name is so much more than the name of Maya of Vishwamani Vrindavan. It means the mood of a Vrindavan. And Rupa goes on to do that. And Prabhupada in the mind of Rupa goes on to do that. He can make it a platform so we can all start to go up, up, up. So eventually we can go back home, back to Gaza. And on this platform. What did he do? He danced. He brought Lord Jagannath out of Puri. And he took Lord Jagannath and he danced himself down the streets of London, down the streets of New York, down the streets of San Francisco, just emanating this bright bhakti around the side. This is what Prabhupada did. But he had very little time. His time was short. But he had made a platform. So what did he do? He begged his friends, Sheila Gurde, to come on that platform. But on that platform, now Sheila Gurde is also standing in the And he's like, we're in the ring, the one stage, not the nun, the nun. He's doing like this. And what is the saying to tell you about what? That personalities of this caliber, their mere existence in the world, they which is all in our citizens. They're dancing, purifying the earth. There's lamps that purify all directions, and they're upgrading God's purify even the heavenly planet. So called by the green age, they're dancing and purifying and vanquishing all the non-sufficiencies. We're so fortunate. So I pray, as the Lord of the Shiva Prabhupada, that the Shiva can just become one day qualified to assist him in the service of Sachinanda and Gauri, in the service of Radha Krishna Kharmigo. Please make me qualified. Please make me qualified. <laughs> Oh, 
And so this is this is the, because the spiritual master is the incarnation of Krishna's mercy. And we're seeing this, I, I can see it so much with Shila Prabhupada in my mind. Just like Shila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj, she was praying that he, in um, that when, when Krishna appeared, he's not Maharaj. Krishna, Krishna, the Lord of all Gospel, she was experiencing, I mean, he was demonstrating his, his leelas for the benefit of all conditioned souls. But I wasn't here. When Lord Chaitanya appeared, Lord Chaitanya liberated the whole universe. But I wasn't here. I somehow missed it. And only by the grace of my spiritual master was I able to, to understand the glories of the past times of Radha and Krishna and was only able to serve Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's only by the grace of our Guru was even greater to us than Krishna, even greater than Mahaprabhu. He is their mercy incarnation. And so this is, uh, this, I was reminded of this uh, just a couple days ago. A friend of mine wrote, reminding me of when Prabhupada was in Iran. I remember this time. It was evening. And we were sitting, uh, Alpha was sitting on, on the balcony. It was very beautiful. Iran at that time in Tehran, it was the summer, it was around, it was Lord Balaram's appearance day time, so it was this time. And Alpha said it was so beautiful, it was like blue water. And so there was namaz um, on the, 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 we were not far from a, a masjid, so there was like, uh, namaz playing. And Alpha said, what is this? And so a trade she was explaining that they're, they're saying names of God, they're calling people to worship the Lord for saying the names of God, like that. And so, um, and Srila Prabhupada said that they should encourage the people in Iran to chant the names of Allah. And so a thought, he said, he said, uh, but uh, isn't the name of Krishna more powerful than the name of Allah? And, and Prabhupada looked at him and he said, are you asking me to be sectarian? And he said that actually Lord Chaitanya, when Lord Chaitanya came, he, he said there is no discrimination in the names of the Lord. That, that people should be encouraged to chant the name, whatever names of the Lord they know. And I was thinking of this, how, how merciful Srila Prabhupada was in distributing Raj Bhakti, that even in, in this Muslim country, he was encouraging people, you know, to become purified in their own ways. And they'll now um, gradually come to the platform. And hopefully they'll be able to meet a bona fide spiritual master and then make advancement. Because it is only by the grace of the spiritual master that one makes the best. But Shila Prabhupada, another, it was like, Shila Prabhupada was engaging us in the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I, I was thinking, how is it that Shila Prabhupada was chosen by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? to bring his message to the Western world, was to fulfill the, the, the prophecy that, that his message will be preached in every town and village. So how is it that Shilapalpa was chosen? Lord Chaitanya has many stalwart devotees. And so just like Shilapalpa Swami, how is it that Shilapalpa Swami was chosen? Lord Chaitanya has so many wonderful devotees. But Sri Chaitanya Rupa Goswami understood the Manavishya of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And therefore he was able to establish his mission in this world. Sri Chaitanya Manavishya. And so in the same way Sri Prabhupada, he understood the Manavishya of his Guru Maharaj. He understood, which is not different. Then, then to the Lord to show it as to the Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And all the way up to Srila Rupa Goswami, 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, now in the, in the Chaitanya Chaitanya we know that this is uh, the fourth verse of, anyway, it's explained that um, this is the external reason of, uh, this is one of the, uh, what is the, uh, the external reason, uh, but anyway, and then, um, Radha Krishna Pranayama, that one is the internal reason. So why is this external? Because Maharaj explained that this is what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give. And what is it? It's Onato Chakarasam Swabha Kushriya, as he explained so beautifully the other day, that it is the Shobha, the Swabha Kushriya, the Shriya of the Shobha. This is the Manchari Bhav. Uh, this is what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give. And so Srila Prabhupada understood this. This is also what he has come to give. In the very first page of Chaitanya Charitamrita, it begins with the Radha Bhagavan Vajayashita. This is one of Srila Prabhupada's favorite verses in which he explains, in which Lord Chaitanya is explaining what is the uh, the topmost type of worship, that the worship of the Rajabhatu. And so Srila Prabhupada is keeping us in this in this life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's engaging us in the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's engaging us in the preaching of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And what is the result? That to the degree that we uh, serve the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and we serve him with love, to that degree, to the same degree, the love is the Srimati Radhika will appear in our hearts. So this is the first piece to do.
I wanted to tell I wanted to tell one short incident. When she, I, I did have the opportunity of associating with Sheila Prabhupada for three months in Los Angeles in 1972, and he gave Sigma Bhagavatam class every morning, and he was speaking on the, the prayers of Queen Kunti. I remember that. That was very wonderful. And after the class, there was always a, a kirtan, and Prabhupada wouldn't leave the kirtan, but somebody else, one of his servants, would leave the kirtan, and Prabhupada would play the gong. And those kirtans were so sublime, and so heavenly, and so ecstatic, and Srila Prabhupada wasn't even leaving. He was just sitting there playing the gong, and one of his disciples was singing. And I remember one time, um, they were making a, every night Prabhupada would go into his, his, his garden during uh, Bhagavad Gita class, during Gora Arti and Bhagavad Gita class. So they made arrangements that each of the different, because I was living in the Los Angeles as a community, and there were a lot of devotees there. And so they were making arrangements that each devotee would get a turn to go into the garden while Sri Prabhupada was there. So I got my turn, and I remember I walked in, and Prabhupada was already there, and they were reading to him from Krishna book. And when I walked in, I felt like I just walked into this atmosphere of, I felt like I walked into a wall of purity. And I felt like, the first thought that came into my mind was, if I even open my mouth in this garden, I'm going to ruin everything. I'm going to ruin the whole atmosphere. It was so incredible. Um, one other funny incident that happened. Um, oh yeah, there were, there were the, the airport greetings. When Sri would come into the airport, Hundreds of devotees would come. I had experience in Los Angeles. And, and Prabhupada would always be the last person that got off the plane. And so we'd be chanting and chanting and chanting. And everybody that was getting off the plane was thinking, oh, maybe they're, maybe they're glorifying me. You got that feeling, you know, when people would see all the devotees chanting. And then, and then finally, through the Prabhupada would come. But it was such an ecstatic, ecstatic experience. I've never experienced anything like it before in my life, the kirtan stuff that we had in the presence of Srila Prabhupada. And even in the, in without the personal presence. In San Francisco, we used to go every night to, um, in the evening, after an evening program, we would go out chanting again, after chanting all day on the streets. And there was one movie called Air, and the and the Chantai Christian movie in it. And we would blitz it. We would go there for about 15 minutes, right when everybody was coming out. And um, it was like as soon as everybody started coming out, the spirit song would start, and the incense would lit up, and and it was like instant ecstasy. We were all in so much ecstasy and we were all brand new devotees, maybe less than one year, all of us, practically. And we were experiencing ecstasy beyond our imagination. And that was all by the mercy of Sri Prabhupada, because on our own, we, we weren't anywhere near qualified. But also, I wanted to say that Sometimes it's said that Sri Prabhupada didn't te teach us the highest thing. And um, in his lectures, he gave us a very strong foundation in Krishna consciousness. But if you read his books, especially Chaitanya Charitamrita and Upadeshamrita, you'll find very, very, very high things. And there's one other thing I wanted to say, which I'm not going to say fully because Sri Prabhupada didn't get very angry with me. <laughs> But um, we do have a, 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 a possibility of understanding through the Prabhupada Swaru. And if, if anybody has any trust in Gorgo Vindamaraj, 
I can tell you later. And then we can verify it with birding. Um, but it's on tape, and it's something that Gorba Vindamara spoke in, in Gambira during Rabiakra time one year. And that, that, that when he revealed his, his um, Mandari Swarup to uh, Gorba Vindamara. I've already been given this, but I can't feel it. 
I have no way to heal it. It's already in my heart. It's so difficult for me to actually feel it. So, Srila Prabhupada, knowing my insensitivity, has also said, sent Gurudev to wake me up and make me understand what, what is already in my heart. What, what this, this name, it, but it's special name. It's not just Hare Krishna Mantra, but it's this name that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also brought. In, and already been explained by Manjari Devi of how, what he's actually trying to give us. He's, he's put in this Hare Krishna mantra what he wants to give us and we don't even know it's there. So we, we need someone else. Oh, please clear my mind, clear my senses so that it can manifest someday within my heart also. So on this day, on the appearance day, of my Diksha Guru Sri Prabhupada and also uh, taking refuge and uh, my Shiksha Guru Sri Bhakti Narayan Maharaj I thank you very much for letting me speak. Brooklyn at that time, came to Brooklyn. He opened the door 
Tommy came in there and just told you. Very popular for folk in the drama. And I was always amazed by that opposing that light. Everybody was so amazed by it. Even there was one policeman uh, in New York at the time, Brooklyn, saw so that walk in the street and he said, Oh, who is that man? And they said, Why? He said, Because he was glowing like a light. You know? So I was always amazed by that, how about the folding. That was the first time I ever saw Bob, but he came in like a and then he walked up to the front of the altar, and I was standing in front of the altar, and then uh, I probably was going to get into the basement, and then I noticed Papa only came up to here about two and he thought, amazing, amazing, that he was such, about five foot long, something like five foot two. Anyway, then after that, Papa went and sat down on the piazza, and he had this booming, lying, hurt voice. That was the first time I ever saw Prabhupada. And then after from that, I started to get my service to Prabhupada. But to understand Prabhupada, and we really started to understand uh, We were distributed. We had Gargi Muni, that time in DDC, asked Prabhupada. He said, How are my books doing? How are my big books? And Gargi Muni told him, but then Prabhupada said, But how is my new Pagan going? Yeah, so he was very fond of this little book, the Gita Gan, the beautiful Bengali version of the Gita. We went to one village to distribute these books in Bengal, and we had this band filled with books. And we started passing out the Bengali Gita Gan. I bet the people started rushing all over for the band. We completely distributed all the band of all the books. We so started completely filled. That uh, was always so happy with this, this Gita Gan. Everyone should read this, please be God. But there's one verse that, that I, I was thinking about, I've been thinking about a long time, that uh, Sri Siddhartha and actually the prophet are discussing, but this is a very important verse for us. Yes, Yaham, Yes, Yaham, Anandunam, Anandunam, Arishi, Tantanam, Shana, Tantanam, the Ajantya Sya Svajana Vita Vita. I especially favor one, I gladly deprive him of his wealth. Then the relatives and friends of such a poverty stricken man abandoned in this way he suffers distress after this death. So they were discussing this whole thing very deeply, what it means. At that time, Prabhupada was considering sannyas also. But the book that people should really read about all these different things like that is Bullock Street's book. Beautiful book, Friends to All. And actually shows how Prabhupada so, had so many friends, so many friends in India. And then the last thing I want to say is that when Prabhupada was coming back, he was going to go to, actually he went to England. He made it to England and he came back. After he came back from England, he was very weak at that time. And uh, the servant told me at that time, he said, Prabhupada should stop traveling so much, otherwise he will not go on. Like that. But Prabhupada had mentioned at that time, just one more time he wanted to go to the West. If he went to the West, then everybody would be okay, like that. So Prabhupada at that time, then he went to Vrindavan, and at that time he disappeared. Like and I was in Haridas for at that time, and I listened to disappearance, but I was very fortunate that I got the association to a few hours and I, I, I say there's, there's sometimes there's a little pride in your room, like that. there's sometimes a little pride, but one time Gurdjie told me, he said, it hit me like a bomb too, he said, you got the association with Shiva Shumar, but don't become proud of that, as I thought. So we have, we have to be careful, you know, like that. The way to keep humble is to come to Guru, like that. So I have my Pandit and Shiva Prabhupada and all the Vaishnavas, 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 I'm very, very fortunate 
that in the beginning of my life, I met the Bhakti Vedanta. No, I met Mahacharanar Vinta in our sleep and Calcutta. And Guru Maharaj told me to serve him. So, from the beginning, I was serving him. From 1946. So, I met still that when there was no stone, the birth of a stone. From there, I am with him. And still I am with him. I know that without any power of Krishna, anyone cannot preach in the whole world in a couple of years like him. So many things, some inspiration of Krishna was there, Mahaprabhu. That is why in his Gurudev, told him to write ancient articles in English and to preach in Western country. Thus, he went to America as a beggar, no pies in his pocket, nothing. And in any part, and they began to think Krishna Okay. And so many books. In 
has completed the books of Lord Goswami also. So, a very couple of the years, he preached after that. He gave sannyas to uh, John Devotee. Both of them not qualified for sannyas. But as Krishna did in his past tense, that by a stone, if it says it goes on, then this will take another stone and take it out and go to the Really, they were not qualified for sannyas, but gave, as a sannyasi he gave, only to preach the name, preach the glory of the Christian name as a And by them all, he preached of our whole world and he distributed his books. I think my teachers are not doing so well, but at that time, young ladies, one young devoted lady, they used to go to Air Force, school, college, university, friends and stations, everywhere. Anyhow, my book situation is going on, but not like all men at that time go to Spain. They had no any shame or any, any bad thing to very desperate. So I think this might be the case. Let let it be for you or well be told. I want that they should also be explained. But I am happy that the mission of Siddha Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the mission of the Krishna, now going very fast. At that time, in the first time, Swami Maharaj saw they are not qualified for Rana Nila Bhakti, has come the birth. So, he only told in books, not by general classes and everything. That is why his own leaders could not know what is Rabanga Bhakti, what is this and that, who is Siddha. Even they could not understand his, his instruction that he never can come from Guru Vrindavan. He has never written. He has written only that Krishna Bodhi says you are not this person. By means to sense that somewhere or somehow the Jiva were remembering Krishna and serving Krishna. After that they are called. But real man is he knows that. Or all Acharya, Yu Goswami, Bhante Vidya Goswami, Vaidanti Tatya, they have told Tatasa. Krishna, when he is alone, Malli with Tatasa Shakti, then Vidhinam will come. And he has never gone to Guru Vrindavan. He has never called out from. Also, they could not understand the mood of their Gurudev. They can call Krishna Radha Pastisha, Pastisha, Pastisha. This is quite wrong. In this way, I see that two little things, wrong ideas they are taking and they are not going to ask to They have no guidance for this. 
and sacrifice in the name of Swami. So that oh, you should take the guidance of Narayan Bharat. Also, he told about Prahat Siddhar Maharaj. So, he told all these things, but they are not falling. Now, lifting. Now, lifting classes are going on very well. Everywhere. Eh? So, to fall down, no faster can nothing. Now, they are lifting. I think that it has no relation with the Krishna or there even the Ritis, they don't know what is far sacrifice, how to do common, what to tell about good. So these are now so many things are going on. This is wrong. Now time. We just have passed. Now time is, has come. It's written and after that is useful. Or say it in your parent. Go to the parent. Thank <laughs> you.